what is SIBO? I've been talking a lot about it, but let's talk about the causes of SIBO. So stay tuned to this video to learn all the many different causes of SIBO and what you can do about them. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for coming back. If you're returning, thanks for joining me for the first time. If you're here for the first time, I would love it if you could hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and share this out to anybody you think might be interested. Helps keep the channel going. I'm a functional medicine doctor, family doctor, and registered dietitian, and I do have my own functional medicine practice. I do a lot of gut health um, rebooting and lower intestinal dysbiosis microbiome issues and SIBO as well as hormone balancing and a lot of other functional medicine topics but I am doing a series on this channel on SIBO itself and I have some prior videos on dysbiosis and the microbiome so check those out if you're interested too I will link some of those above and there are some playlists on my channel so um, let's get into the causes of SIBO I've been talking about it a lot and I've touched on the causes a little bit, but I want to expand. So what do you need to know about what causes SIBO? Well, first, let's talk about don't be discouraged if you've had SIBO and it's come back. It is common for you know two-thirds of people to have recurrent SIBO or be chronic SIBO sufferers. So it's not something you necessarily did wrong. Sometimes there could be a lack of full treatment. Also, a lot of times GI doctors will just treat um, with rifaximin, that antibiotic I've discussed, and not do any of the other gut balancing approach afterwards, or not do any um, kind of diving into the causes. So then you can definitely re have it recur. And then a third of the time, you can just get better after that one treatment. So we want to treat the cause and lower the chance, or at least expand the time frame in between recurrences. Um, what are some causes of SIBO? Now, there's this is a long list, so I'm surprised not all of us are running around with SIBO. But one major cause is food poisoning. Um, we do have a test for food poisoning. I don't use it very often because a lot of times people will just describe to me they had food poisoning and we don't really need an expensive test to do it. Now, I think the test has been around long enough that sometimes insurance companies will cover it, but it's called IBS check. And that can at least confirm that that might be the cause of your SIBO. Um, there's also, because what happens with a, in, in, a foodborne, in, I mean, yeah, food poisoning, foodborne infection, it, it slows the, um, the movement, it's, it slows the vitality of the gut and um, increases the chance of SIBO. Happening meds, medications like opioids, um, opiates, um, you know, your hydrocodone, codeine, um, Vicodin, same thing, I guess, um, Percocet uh, with oxycodone, morphine, those kind of things. Um, so uh, there are a lot of people are on those for a short period of time or a long period of time, and that can um, slow down that, that migrating motor complex and, and cause SIBO. Antibiotics, of course, we know that causes imbalanced microbiome, but can also cause SIBO. Um, and then we have proton pump inhibitors. Those A lot of people are put on proton pump inhibitors um, from their GI doctors, or they think, oh, I have acid stomach, I'm going to go you know, to my pharmacy and get the purple pill or Nexium or, you know, Protonix or, um, uh, ne uh, I'm already said Nexium, Omeprazole, Prilosec, you know, those kind of things. And then that does slow their motility. And well, really actually what it does is decrease the stomach acid, allows the bacteria to grow. Our stomach acid is very protective, even though it can cause, it can be overrun. There are natural ways to deal with stomach acid instead of taking a PPI medicine. And so please see some of my other playlists that I'll link, or my other videos that I'll link to help you if you're having trouble with acid and you don't want to take those medications. Um, and so that, the H. pylori video is what I'm referring to. Also, I do have a free PDF if you join my email list on 10 tips to beat SIBO. And then if you're kind of looking for more information, a more deeper dive, there is my Trust Your Gut course that I will have linked in the description. So what else? Um, inflammatory bowel disease, so ulcerative colitis or Crohn's can be a big contributor to SIBO. Diabetes can be a big contributor to SIBO. Um, enzymes or lack of enzymes or lack of good bile acid, sometimes gallbladder removal, can cause SIBO. Parasite infection can cause SIBO. Um, if you have Parkinson's disease, you may have a higher risk for SIBO. Ehlers-Danlos or Ehlers-Danlos, um, where your you know hypermobile joints that can contribute to SIBO. Also, for hypothyroid, it could cause SIBO. Um, diverticulosis, Lyme disease, 
mold toxic illness, um, lowered immune system from various reasons, scleroderma, which is an autoimmune disease. Um, here's a big one. If you've had surgeries uh, on your bowels, if you've had part of your bowel removed, if you've had um, any kind of abdominal surgery, appendectomy, meaning your, your appendix was removed, um, you've had um, a scope in there even. And then another one that I run into quite a bit um, because I work with hormone imbalances a lot is in female health is endometriosis. So we see a lot of a, a big link between endometriosis and SIBO. Um, and a lot of times women don't know that. And it can be very confusing when you have endometriosis because it, first of all, it can take you like forever to get a diagnosis because it's like, is it cramping? Is it really bad periods? Is it um, intestinal pain? Well, it could be yes to all of the above. And it's not just one thing. It's probably, well, it is probably the endo kind of combining everything together. So endometriosis, you have growth of the endometrial tissue in places you don't want it. So it could even be far away from the uterus and create, you know, pain other places. I've seen women have rectal pain from endometriosis. I've seen them have pain up here, even in like, you know, where their stomach is in between the ribs. I've seen them have pain in their sides. Um, just can vary. So if you have, if you're a woman, um, especially a woman who's still having periods and you just kind of have this uncontrolled pain, you have SIBO symptoms, uh, definitely, you know, check that out with your doctor to see if, if you have endometriosis. There's also traumatic brain injury as a potential cause. So concussions, that's one that's not talked about very often and uh, could be a cause of SIBO. So what can you do about it? Well, it depends on the cause. You know, of course, you're going to go through the treatment. You're going to go through the, sorry, um, the diet, the prokinetics, the herbal or um, pharmaceutical antibiotics, all the approaches I'm talking about here after you've discussed them with your healthcare provider, of course. Um, but then what can you do for these root causes? Well, if you have like a, a surgery or a lot of scar tissue there, there is visceral manipulation. You can look for a provider in your area that like a massage provider that has been trained in visceral manipulation. Even better if you can um, find somebody that's been the, trained with the Wern technique, but that's their whole protocol is really expensive, only limited to certain places. So it, it may be harder to find. I'll put some links down below though. So you know what I'm talking about. Um, you can also try to get better control of your condition. So hypothyroidism, work with your provider on your thyroid. If diabetes, make sure your blood sugar is controlled. I have quite a few videos on um, some natural ways to do that and some ways to approach your lifestyle with that. Um, ehlers Donlos, there's not a lot. You can't like stop that. It's not like a pill or anything for ehlers Donlos, but you know, going to physical therapy, maybe getting some of that visceral manipulation that I talked about. Um, just trying to control the hypermobility as best you can. So really, I think finding a physical therapist trained in in, um, in ehlers Danlos and EDS is, is really, really important. So doing that, uh, just trying to control all the symptoms the best you can so the body's not in this kind of state of disarray and the body's more coordinated and working together and that may help the migrating motor complex as well as check out my video on uh, prokinetics and the migrating motor complex to help that. You want to be fasting overnight to help the migrating motor complex and you want to space your meals every four to five hours, but there's also other information in that video. So the same thing for like Parkinson's, you can't stop that necessarily, but you could do these techniques, the visceral manipulation, um, definitely working on the migrating motor complex, treating the SIBO. And then if you do the prokinetic piece of it too, for either of those conditions or Lyme or any of these conditions, you want to do all those steps and that will help at least extend the, the length of time between potential SIBO flare-ups. Um, and so immune system, you'd want to work on that. If it's an enzyme or bile acid deficiency, there are definitely supplements and replacements for that. I do talk about that a lot in my Trust Your Gut course and in some of my videos too. There's also the ileocecal valve, which is a valve um, between the ileum and the cecum, two parts of our intestine. And it, if it can stays open, it's bad, or if it stays closed, it's bad. It's supposed to open and close. Um, so there's some ways to test for that. You could go to a provider that's trained in looking for that. I do that with my patients. And um, they, there's some simple techniques they can do 
to help you if you're in an open state or a closed state with your ileocecal valve. So that's a fascinating one. And then if you have diverticulosis, definitely making sure you pay attention to what they've told you about your diverticulosis and how to avoid triggers for that. Traumatic brain injury, you know, again, you just want to make sure the, the migrating motor complex is working well. So look at that prokinetics video and potentially, you know, do the guide that I have coming out. Um, and you want to make sure your hormones are balanced with traumatic brain injury. I can see, I do see um, hormone imbalances, testosterone and prolactin and estrogen and all that from traumatic brain injury. So check out your hormone. You want the body to be as balanced as possible. And that way you can keep the, the gut in balance or at least keep it at bay, the SIBO if, if possible. Um, and then I think I dove into pretty much most of those mold. You would want to treat the mold. Of course, um, that can be a whole fall of wax to use an old term that can be a whole expensive thing um you want to get your your house checked out or your home your apartment whatever it is it's really checked out by a mold professional um and treated appropriately get some good air filters i like molecule i have that in my recommended list um germ guardians a lower lower budget one not quite as good as molecule but can work and um Make sure you follow a low mold diet while you're treating the mold. Maybe you need to follow that for an extended period of time. It varies from the SIBO diet quite a bit. There's there's definitely a, a lot of overlap there, though. So not quite a bit, but it does vary from it. And, and just make sure you're working on that problem as a potential root cause. So hopefully this helps. Um, if you have ulcerative sorts of colitis or, or inflammatory bowel disease, make sure you work with a provider who's well-versed in that because there's lots of natural ways that we can help you with that. And, and then, you know, stop the potential recurrent cycle of SIBO that can exist with that. So thank you so much for joining me. I will see you next time. Remember to like and subscribe and share this out and help keep the channel going. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments.